development to improve the quality of life, fiscal stewardship, and infrastructure and asset management. Following the governing body's consensus, these are the initiatives that were included in the 2014 proposed budget. To support the goal, the strategic goal of economic development, you've approved the development of a comprehensive plan, an economic development strategy, economic development technical studies as the need arises, and that's to get better information to make decisions on potential projects, to design a new city website, and for other economic development activities, again, that was not partner specific, that was the internal capacity or other activities that would have the city take the lead. To support the strategic goal of improving the quality of life, you've approved a railroad quiet zone, the crossing guard contract for the school crossings, and citizen engagement software. To support the, the strategic goal of infrastructure and asset management, you have approved the IT business and disaster recovery plan that is a three-year phase or financed approach. And also, there is, uh, for personnel, that represents the additional support staff to support the initiatives as presented at the July 1st work session. And following the governing body's discussion at that last work session, an additional 3% merit pool to reward high performance employees is included in the proposed budget. And any associated housekeeping changes will be brought back to you later for that. Also, at the July 1st work session, the governing body expressed its desire to decrease the originally proposed 12% rate increases for each of the water and sewer funds. And you asked staff to review the impact of graduated water rates and also inquired about increased funding from the electric utility. Staff proposes implementing the graduated water rate structure and reallocating utility penalties and reconnection fees equally between the three utilities instead of all revenue being allocated to the electric fund as it currently is. The reason for this is because penalties are not a function of utility usage. They're intended to deter and recover the additional administrative expense and burden <coughs> that it takes to collect delinquent accounts, which is a function of the utility billing division. Our utility billing division is an internal service fund, and all of its activities, billing, meter reading, customer contact, everything having to do with collecting and collecting delinquent accounts as well, is funded equally by the three utilities because it doesn't take any more work to bill for one fund as it does for any other fund. Because of that budgeting practice with our internal service fund funding three from all three funds equally, it is appropriate to allocate the associated revenue for penalties and reconnection fees back out to those three funds. Did we talk about that last, at the last meeting? No, this is a solution based on the, the desire to keep the uh, rate increases lower. So, oh, sorry, I went too far. Regarding the proposed electric transfer, the intergovernmental rate that the city charges itself for utility usage for city facilities is supposed to be an at cost with no profit component rate. It's supposed to be the cheapest rate. But the commercial all electric rate is less. Finance staff brought this rate difference to the attention of Gardner Energy and they indicated that they were doing rate studies. Um, finance staff conducted a rate comparison analysis for fiscal year 2011 and fiscal year 2012 through October. And the analysis was verified by the then outside auditor. The verified results indicated that qualifying city facilities could have saved $219,000 if they had been billed at the commercial all-electric rate, that is for 2011 and 12. Um, most of that would go to the sewer fund, nearly all of it, 200 and some thousand. Staff proposes the governing body to consider 
a transfer of 219000 from the electric fund as a correction of the previous savings lost because the intergovernmental rate wasn't as the most advantageous rate as it was intended. Staff estimates the combined impact of merely the first two, implementing the graduated water rate structure and allocating those penalty and reconnection fees equally among the three funds, can generate equivalent revenue to what we asked for when we originally proposed 12% from each fund and maintain adequate fund balance and it will enable the proposed water rate increase to be reduced from 12% to 8% and the proposed sewer rate increase to be reduced from 12% to 11%. These are the same increases that were approved for 2013. The combined impact on the average residential customer is $8.59 per month, which is a $2 per month savings from what was previously proposed at 12% each. And, and again, $9 or $8.59 means what size family? 5,000 gallons is what we use as an average. Which is two and a half people, is that, is that right? Two and a half people, roughly. That concludes my update for your public hearing. Hmm. Any questions? Well, yeah, I have a quick question. So, so you had stated that the um, rate reductions were a cause of the first two initiatives, first two. not the no. $219,000 transfer, no, which you said would go mainly to wastewater. It's about $201,000 to the wastewater fund, and the rest is all but a tiny sliver goes to the general fund. So if that two hundred one thousand dollars is transferred to the wastewater fund, mm -hmm. does that further reduce the need for the sewer rating? That's up to you because I didn't know if you would want to do all part phased, not phased. So these are all considerations, and you could or you could leave it in fund balance to cover any opportunities that may come up. To be determined, you do have a public works director coming on, mm -hmm. and I don't don't proposed to guess to him what it might be for. But the but these rate increases, the 8% and the 11% mm -hmm. now, cover the cost of the maintenance activities that were identified and yes. shared with us last it week. Is, it is what is equivalent to what, when we laid out all those critical projects and all those other components, it is the equivalent of what that was at 12% each, mm -hmm. covering all those immediate critical projects and maintaining adequate fund balance. So, and I have just have one more question. Okay. So the projects that you went through last week, mm -hmm. repainting of one of the... Clear wells yeah. and the... Mm -hmm. Those, in my mind, are projects that, they are, they're maintenance projects, mm -hmm. but they don't happen every year, but probably, I don't know, once there's every five years or, or something. Right. To me, there's day-to-day -day maintenance activities, flushing lines, things like that, that we are not doing at the rate that we necessarily should be, which I think of that as more ongoing maintenance. Is that reflected? Are those types of ongoing daily maintenance activities reflected in this budget? Uh, what is reflected in the budget is the, the ongoing operating budgets requested by the Public Works Department. So as far as are we flushing adequately or not, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't answer that because I was, that was not a discussion. I mean, I guess, I guess my qu the question really boils down to, have we increased, with this budget, have we increased the amount of ongoing maintenance activity that we're doing within public works, water, and wastewater? Or is it status quo as it has been in the past years? It is at this point pretty much status quo, although there is a proposal to add uh, one employee in, in water and one in wastewater and one in, in line maintenance. Now that's split half between water and wastewater, but it would add one more employee in that in that area. So with, uh, with that one more employee, we we are able to do more than we're doing now. Um, how much more? Uh, I'm not sure. And do you think more is enough? I mean, do you think that that's enough? Long term, no. Uh, short term, yeah, it'll get us through for another few years until we can do a little more. Uh, we're doing enough flushing now to keep our chlorine levels up where they need to be. Uh, we're not doing enough uh, valve exercising, we're not doing enough manual inspection, uh, some other things like that, um, but we're doing enough to, to keep things going. And with 
you know, when we get another employee next year, uh, if we get 